Hey, hey YouTubers, thank you for stopping by and I hope this video finds you well. If you're new here, my name is JC and this is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and greeting videos on Tuesdays and DIY stuff for all types on Fridays. We're back at the garage today with another Ford Maverick video. I'm going to be addressing something that's been bugging me for a while and that having to do with the Maverick's uh, drive mode. Uh, every time you get in the vehicle, you put the key on. Uh, it defaults to normal drive mode and I prefer that to be echo mode. Uh, I understand this is not for a lot of people and if you're one of them, do me a favor, just click on the title of the channel where you will find a dedicated playlist to every topic that we cover. So I know a lot of people are going to be questioning, how do you come up with this invention, whatever. First of all, this is not an invention. All we are doing is automating the switch on the center console. Uh, how it came about it was uh, over the 4th of July weekend, my wife and I were down in Cape Coral. We went to the Country Music Festival, uh, Red, White, and Boom, I think that's what it's called. And um, we stopped at a coffee shop, picked up coffee, got back into the vehicle. I bumped my hand, put coffee all over the center console. And uh, so the first thing that I did when I came back was to take the center console out, clean all the switches. And once I saw the plug for the drive mode switch, it's something that I recognized because it is the same as the Focus and even going back to the SHO. So um, there are companies out there who make modules for this and I will, I will show you that in a little bit. So the first thing that bumped to my head is to, hey, let's just make a circuit, let's make a timer, blah, blah, blah. This is easy to take care of. And um, I said, well, you know, I think that's gonna alienate a lot of people. So what I did is I outsourced uh, a couple of timing modules from Amazon and I'm going to take you step by step of how to do this mod. Uh, I understand this is not for a lot of people, but do me a favor, watch the video in its entirety and then make a decision whether this is for you or not. I will also, uh, I will try to do a printout with detailed instructions and put that on the blog. Check this out. Please note that no animals, humans, or vehicles were hurt in the filming of this video. But if you're one of the many who think that adding a cash can or changing the oil before 5,000 miles will void your warranty, this video is not for you. Although we're going to be building a device that you may not want to take to the airport with you, all that you need to replicate this mod is something hard to find nowadays. That is common sense. Please note that all the engineering has been done for you. With that said, no express or implied warranties are given since the results are solely dependent on human execution. Also, there are no special tools required, but I strongly recommend soldering all the wires. You can get a soldering iron at Harbor Freight for about $6, and if you don't have wire strippers and things like that, consider a kit like this one from Amazon for about 10 bucks. To get started, I'm going to remove the center console and share with you my findings. To remove the center console, we'll start by removing two 7mm bolts at the front of the console under the USB charging plugs. We then need to remove the 8mm bolt on the driver's side panel by the gas pedal, followed by four 10mm bolts, two in the middle and two towards the back of the console. The panel on the passenger side snaps right off. We also need to unplug the center console from the vehicle. Press the clip in the center of the plug and flip the Y lever towards the front of the vehicle. To remove the console, lift the rear and pull backwards slowly. Make sure you don't pull any wires. There are two computers underneath the center console. Make sure you don't pull any of those plugs or wires. Let's take a look at the drive mode switch. As I mentioned earlier, this looks familiar and that is because there are several companies out there that make similar devices for the SHO and the Focus MK4. One of the most popular one is in the Australian market and it's called 4 Mod. If you take a look at the instructions for this device, you can see that the harness is not only in the same location, but the color codes of the wires are the same as well. With that in mind, I decided to investigate a little bit more. Okay, so I have the switch out of the, uh, out of the, the center console. And uh, we, if this is the, exactly what I predicted, that it's the same thing as a focus, uh, all of the switches in here are just push buttons. And uh, what they do, they all reference the black and blue, which is the ground. Uh, and for the particular, uh, for all the four products that I play with, uh, it's normally the purple with the purple line, dark purple line. 
and that will be for this guy right here which is um, so this goes in like this that means it's the one on the bottom here and the one on the top So if I push the that, it just makes contact. So what needs to happen is that we need to automate the momentary switch responsible for changing the drive mode. These pulses need to be about one second in duration and about three seconds apart. We need two pulses for the towing mode, three pulses for the slippery or snow mode, four pulses for echo mode, and five pulses for sport mode. There is one additional issue, that is the extended depth zone the Ford Maverick has. What we need to do is create a pause before sending the pulses of 5 to 6 seconds. And that is why we need a second timer. Here's what the diagram looks like. All right, before I get going with the installation, uh, I know that somebody's going to say, hey, why don't you go here to the front of the plug? Uh, the cable is right there. Yeah, it is right there, but the ground reference uh, When you measure between here and there uh, There's resistance in place and that is because these guys are going through the shifter switch and uh, There might be dials or something in there. There's a resistance between here and the other end uh, and actually uh, what that switch is doing is actually feeding the shifter and the shifter is feeding the computer so uh, I do not suggest you uh, get it at the master plug I suggest you get it at the switch hey guys uh, so I wanted to take a quick uh, second here and just give you an update what I'm doing uh, please don't worry too much about the specifics because I am going to provide uh, you know written instructions on my blog um, so uh, first step a, I made a bridge connection to power the small board from the big board and uh, I'm going to make a second harness, a pigtail, that is going to connect this uh, to the connection to the vehicle. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm going to be using this uh, humidity resistant uh, plugs. And uh, the reason for this uh, will be uh, if I need to service it or uh, if I need to take the car to a dealer for any recalls, I may want to disconnect that. A, another way of doing it would be to uh, use a uh, uh, switch, but I don't have any mini switches, but these are like 30 amps, uh, they're just big and bulky. So uh, yeah, the quick disconnect cable I think will be the best way to go. Um, to mount the boards onto the box, I'm going to be using standoffs. This is what you use to mount PC boards, and if you ever put together a computer, I'm sure you have a box of this laying around. I hope you didn't throw them away. I'm going to be mounting the boards on the lid so that when I open this, I can service it. It'll be easier to service. Uh, what else? I'm also going to be adding a grommet to the box on the side. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, put everything together so we can test it and program it and come back and show you how to program the module. As I said, don't sweat the details. I'm going to program. Uh, I'm going to provide you with written details about everything that I'm doing here. All right, uh, here's the project all put together. Uh, I had to make this white jacks here because the cables were too thick to uh, fit into the little uh, Molex plug. But uh, anyways, what we have here is a five timer delay and a cycle of four pulses, uh, which are two set are five seconds apart and uh, two seconds in duration. We need to have the trigger disconnected. Uh, in order to program it and to program it uh, all you have to do is press the set button here hold it down to we get uh, to we get a p7 once you get to p7 you're gonna go we want this guy at zero all right hit the set one more time the time for that is going to be three seconds and uh, then we're gonna that's gonna be zero hit the set again the second time is gonna be five seconds apart and the cycle is going to be four cycles and go to go to echo mode or you can go to sport mode whatever you want all right once that is set then we're going to trigger it by giving it ground one two three four and that's our cycle let's go ahead and put the um let me put the trigger in place and i'll show you how it works from the starter 
Right, something that I left out of the last segment is the adjustment of the first timer. There's a pot right here and there's a little, you're gonna need a micro screw uh, driver and if you tighten it, you screw it, uh, that makes the delay longer. If you own tighten or counterclockwise, that makes the delay shorter. I have it set to roughly five seconds. There's a manual, there's a switch here for doing manual testing and there is an LED that lets you know when it's active. So we're gonna try that. One, two, three, four, five. That's pretty much all it does. It delays the countdown from the second timer uh, or the cycle from the second timer for five seconds. Uh, so let's say we have this already installed on the vehicle. We're gonna basically how it's gonna work in real life. Uh, here we have uh, power and ground uh, source and we're gonna mimic like uh, we crank in the engine. And so really locked down. It's gonna calm down and then trigger the switch. Basically what it's doing is mimicking what you would do when you get into the vehicle. You start the engine and then you hit your drive mode switch one, two, three, four times uh, to go into echo mode or you can program it to do uh, whichever mode you want, uh, sports mode, towing mode, whatever it is that you want. All right, one last detail and that is this guy right here. You're probably asking what the hell is that? Well, I had to change the polarity of the trigger over here because uh, the way I read the uh, description on the website on Amazon, uh, it said it could be triggered positive or negative, but it's only listening to negative. So I had to change the polarity from the starter, which is positive uh, to negative, and I had to get that. I will make sure that all the details are described on the uh, PDF that I will have for download on my website. As far as installing the module in the truck, I used Verco to hold it in place in the flat area towards the front of the center console. I zip tied the relay to the harness and that is it. The connections to the vehicles are directly in the ignition switch. To access that, you're going to need to remove the bottom cover of the steering column which has two 7mm screws. Then remove the grommet around the key, this just pulls out of place. Pull the cover down near the steering wheel, then push towards the firewall to release the hooks at the end. The blue and white wire is the static signal for the trigger and the green is your 12 volt source. I hooked up the ground to the steering column but that's just a lot of extra work. Leave it behind and connect it somewhere in the center console. One thing I did not highlight was the fuses. There are two 1 amp fuses, one for the starter wire and one for the power source. It is important that these are as close to the source as possible. All right, now for the moment of truth, let me put the seatbelt on so we have less um, Less warning lights. Turn this off. There we go. Yeah, it's a little bit of clicking going on, but hey, I'd rather run in echo mode all day long is than uh, using fuel. Last but not least, I want to address reports of less MPGs in echo mode. In the past, echo mode has made the vehicle sluggish and slow to response in case of an emergency. The Maverick has a fallback map that will add fuel, timing, and boost if you pedal the gas pedal and force it to downshift. If you drive on and off the gas or exceed 2500 RPMs, the normal driving mode is a better choice. Guys, thank you for watching and stay tuned. There are more full Maverick mods and upgrade videos coming your way.